This may just be the most nerfed spell in D&D 5e. From 1st edition to 5th edition, Animal Friendship has taken players from Barry, King of the Badgers, to Barry, a guy who was nice to a badger once. What a shame. I'm John of Forever DM and Encounter Writer at DumbestDnd.com, and today we're taking a look at Animal Friendship from the Player's Handbook, available to Rangers, Druids, Bards, and Nature Domain Clerics. Animal Friendship gives players the chance to make a beast their bud. Animal Friendship is a first level enchantment spell and takes one action to cast. Also lasts a full 24 hours. Spell requires verbal, somatic, and material components, with the material being, surprise, a morsel of food. Sadly, Animal Friendship is no longer as powerful as it used to be, and from a recent poll, most DMs encourage players to not take the spell in their games. To understand if this is the most nerfed spell, we need to take a look at the history. We'll get into Raw after that. First edition had it right. The effect was permanent, had rules around teaching the animal tricks, and took six rounds to cast. You could also have up to twice your level and hit dice number of animals. That's a whole little beast army. You could also have mistletoe as a material component, which is strange, and only the druid could cast it. Badger army? Confirmed. In second edition, they extended who could cast the spell, but said, oh, this takes one hour now, and added that you had to teach the trick within three months, or the beast couldn't learn it. Badger Army confirmed, but uh, more tricks. Third edition had it going in the right direction by reducing to an instantaneous action and bumped the trick number to three per each point of intelligence the animal possessed. It's going in the right direction and even stated that the effect was not magical. Badger Army still confirmed. But then in D&D 5e, they butchered this spell. No loyalty, no friendship, just the ability to convince a beast you mean it no harm. Ugh, and it only lasts 24 hours, and you have to burn extra spell slots to affect more than one beast. So even if I cast it as a ninth level spell, I only get an agreement from nine badgers that I am friendly. So sad. Sad. Just sad. From unending friendship to a meager 24 hours, animal friendship is ruined. Let's look at the rest, I guess. This is an easy spell to abuse if you don't understand the rules. Before we break it down further, drop your comments or questions in below and we'll see if we are able to answer the rest of those questions. We already know Animal Friendship is much more restricted than prior editions, but let's break down the rules as written. This spell lets you convince a beast that you mean it no harm. Keyword being beast here, a specific monster creature designation. So pay attention to that. Choose a beast that you can see within range. Must have line of sight and we see the word beast again. Good news is that that means dinosaurs are in play. It must see and hear you, meaning you can't be invisible and you must be using that somatic component of the spell. If the beast's intelligence is four or higher, the spell fails. This mark of intelligence is typically where you start getting away from primal instincts into domesticated beasts. Auto fails in spells are a major downer, especially when the threshold is so low. For intelligence or higher means you need it to be a beast with int one, int two, or int three. There are about 100 official beasts that are fluffy dum-dums in the SRD, so this isn't completely useless. And honestly, most of the dinosaurs are available. Back to Raw. Otherwise, the beast must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by you for the spell's duration. So best chances are the lower wisdom beasts. So a polar bear might not be your best bet, wisdom of 13, nor an all mirage, wisdom of 14. If successful, though... Congrats. And say it with me. What does it mean when a creature is charmed? A charm creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. The charmer has advantage on any ability check to interact socially with the creature. Also, that means it might still attack the rest of your party. And if that's the case, what good is it? Your party is going to have to defend themselves. Uh, Excellent segue to the rest of Raw. If you or one of your companions harms the target... The spell ends. Watch your area of effect spells and be sure your party knows about your newfound friendship. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, you can affect one additional beast for each slot above first. More furry friends for you. But are you really going to burn a fifth level spell to maybe get past five wolves? If you're going to use animal friendship, your best use of animal friendship is going to be against the high CR low int beasts and generally the last beast in combat. In combat, if your sorcerer is getting blasted by a hulking crab, you might be able to get in between with animal friendship and then supplement that with animal handling to generally calm the creature. Positive there is that you have advantage on all ability checks during the duration. Another use is when you've initiated combat or a beast thinks you mean it harm. 
Animal handling likely isn't enough to change its mind. Debatable. Whereas animal friendship changes it for 24 hours if successful. I could see this being valuable for the last animal in a pack for combat, though they still will want to attack other party members initially. But what's the difference between animal friendship and solid animal handling? The answer to this is a classic, it depends. As written, animal handling is for calming already domesticated animals like a mount or a pet. But many DMs, myself included, use animal handling checks with creatures out in the wild. An unscientific poll we did had folks revealing that there really isn't much use for the spell itself at all. Most DMs say that an animal handling check is likely enough to calm an animal. Especially for those attuned to nature, why wouldn't you let a druid be able to calm other animals? Shattered Obelisk makes this even more true by writing into the module that a pack of wolves will let the party pass if they roll high and only a DC 10 if food is involved. A DC 10 is nothing, quoting, a character who tries to calm the animals can make a DC 15 wisdom or animal handling check. On a successful check, the wolves allow all the characters to move throughout the room. If the wolves are given food, the DC lowers to 10. With so many DMs open to the animal handling skill being used in place of animal friendship, this spell is likely only useful for overly aggressive or excessively dangerous beasts. Now, rules as written, this spell is helpful. But from an unscientific survey, most DMs are going to let you roll with animal handling checks. If it was its first or third edition spell, this would be a really fun one. But as it is, Animal Friendship drops into the lowest tiers of first level spells. Again, check with your DM on animal handling versus animal friendship. They may tell you to just not take this spell. At the end of the day, that's all right. The thing to do, though, is make sure you're talking with your DM, talking with your table about what is allowed, what is not allowed, and if animal friendship really has a spot with you and your druid, ranger, whatever it may be. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and until next time, thanks for watching.